great. So just know that at the end of this practice, I'm going to repeat this announcement that we will have our meditation mindfulness practice. So we'll have our yoga class, we'll take a little few minute break, and then right on the dot of noon, we will begin again with our mindfulness practice. So I hope you can stay for that. But if you can't, that's also, I understand whatever you're gonna to do today, do it mindfully. Our class today will focus on back bending poses. And just a couple of suggestions to allow you to have a safer, uh, better experience with these poses. When you think about bending back, don't worry about how far back you're going to go. Think about creating length in your spine first. In other words, reaching up, extending your spine before you reach back. Also, your hand placements can help you with back bends. And I'll be demonstrating some modifications as we do our back bends to make it safer and more accessible for everyone on this class this morning. So without further ado, let's begin. So let's begin by taking our seat, knowing that when we come to our seat, we come to our practice and we bring all of us to our practice, our bodies, our minds, our hearts, our energy. However it is we're showing up today, let that be part of your practice. Feeling your feet on the floor, lengthening your spine, maybe rolling your shoulders a few times. I always like to do that because that's where my tension builds up. And then back in the other direction. Let's invite the shoulders up towards the ears, create fists with the hands, tighten the muscles of your arms, press your feet into the floor, squeeze your belly back towards the spine, find a muscle you can squeeze and tighten, and then let it all go with a sigh. Ha. So here I invite you to let your eyes close or look softly at the floor in front of you. Turning your attention to this moment, this breath, and this body that you're inhabiting. Just noticing how the breath is showing up this morning. And noticing any areas of your body that perhaps is holding on to a little bit of tension or tightness. Try to send the breath to those places. And if your mind is still active and busy with thoughts of what you need to do later on in the day, or maybe something that happened earlier, see if you can direct it back to the moment by coming back to the breath. Gradually expanding the breath into the three-part breath. And that means breathing into the belly first, maybe placing your hands on the belly, feeling it expand like a balloon as you breathe in, and guiding the breath up through your chest all the way to your shoulders, and exhaling from the top down. allowing your breath to be full and deep, but without any effort or struggle. Each time you breathe out, see if you can release a little more tension. 
each time you breathe in, see if you can become a little more present. Let's take three more full, very conscious breaths. At the end of that third exhale, just gently put that technique aside and let your natural breath come back. Its own natural, easy rate and rhythm. And we'll bring our centering to close and move into the rest of our practice by joining our voices in the sound of Aum. Deep breath. Oh, Om Shanti, peace. May our practice bring us peace. So sweeping your arms up as you breathe in and exhale, floating them down. <sighs> Breathing in through the nose, Breathing out through the nose or through the mouth. I like to look up as I breathe in and let my chin fall towards my chest as I breathe out. So the next time your arms reach overhead, let's move into mountain pose. So planting your feet on the floor, lengthening your spine, lifting up through your fingers as the shoulders slide down your back. Nice, slow, steady breath. Watch the sensation as it builds in your arms and shoulders. Good, so let's leave the left arm lifted, lowering the right hand down and begin to sweep that left arm across the ceiling and down. Sweep it across, as you breathe in, exhale, arm comes down. And you can also follow your fingers with your gaze. That will help warm up the neck a little bit as well. So let's sweep across this time and pause. So lengthen through the fingers, extend the arm and ground through your sitting bones. So make sure you're equally balanced on the chair. See if you can reach a little bit further. I'm going to add a little forward and back rocking motion with this. Feel free to join me if you like. Make sure you're breathing nice and steady. and then float that arm down. Reach up with that arm one more time and then bend at the elbow. Give yourself a nice pat on the back. And I'm gonna cradle that elbow with my right palm. Nice tall sit, feet flat on the floor. So you can either just continue to hold on to the elbow or if you'd like, take that right arm 
reach it around and see if you can shake hands with yourself. Are you still breathing? Notice when you start to struggle, when you're working too hard, your breath changes. So keep the breath steady. Let's take one more breath here. Good, and then release that. Oh, and just jiggle the shoulders a little bit. Great. Let's begin to sweep the other arm. So we're just gonna warm up the upper body a little bit. And then we're going to review our alternate nostril breathing, which I like to do when the weather gets warmer. It's a cooling breath. It's also a very relaxing breath. So we'll review that. Sweeping across and bringing it down. So this time we're gonna reach across and pause. See if you can reach a little further. Sit bones evenly balanced on the chair. And let's add that little forward and back if you like. Remember everything in this class is optional except breathing. And always know that you can sit out a pose or modify a pose until you feel ready. Good. So reaching up with that arm a little bit further and then let's bend that arm at the elbow. Make sure you're in a nice tall sit. Left palm cradles the right elbow. As much as you can, draw the elbows back. That will open your chest to more breath. If you like, you can try reaching around with the other hand, see if you can touch your fingertips or maybe get close, probably closer on one side than the other, that usually happens. Let's take one more nice deep breath here and then let it go. Release those arms. So alternate nostril breath is, as I said, a nice cooling breath or relaxing breath. And according to yogic teaching, it balances the right and left sides of the brain, which is very helpful for being our best selves, our most creative selves, our most organized selves. We're gonna be using the right hand. I'm holding up my right hand. It looks to you like my left, but I'm using my right. I'm going to be using the thumb and the ring finger. The pointer finger and the middle finger can tuck into your palm or you can just leave them extended. So placing your thumb on your nose right above where the nostril flares, breathe in through the left nostril and then place the ring finger on the left nostril, release the thumb, breathe out on the right. Breathe in on the right, lock that nostril, release the ring finger out on the left. In on the left, switch sides, breathe out on the right. Keep your elbow and shoulder relaxed. Breathing in, locking that nostril, breathing out on the left, on the other side. You don't have to press too hard. And you want to be just above the part where the nostril flares out. If you have the rhythm down, you can allow your eyes to close and just notice how this breath feels. We'll just do a few more rounds here. If you lose your place, don't worry. 
Just go back to your three-part breath. Good, and the next time you exhale from the left side, let that be the signal to release your hand, end the practice, perhaps taking just a moment to notice how you feel. Great. All right, so let's do our old standby, the six movements of the spine. We do it almost every week because it's such a good practice. We'll start with the dog and the cat. So as you inhale, the chest moves forward, the shoulders move back, the head looks up, and I'm pushing my upper body forward. Good. Exhaling, spine rounds towards the back of your chair, chin tucks. Breathing in and breathing out. So making sure there's a nice space between your back and the back of your chair so you have room to press back towards the back of the chair. Breathing in and out. Breathing in. It looks like somebody else has joined the class, so please make sure you let them in. Breathing in and breathing out. Let's do that once more. Nice deep breath in. And exhale, let all the breath go, squeeze it out. And bring it back to neutral. Ready for your twist? Here we go. Right arm begins by stretching out long, nice deep in breath. Bring that palm to your left knee, left hand to the side of your chair. Take the first in breath to sit tall and then let the exhale begin the twist. Gentle with the neck. An option is to cross the left leg over the right. Feel free to join me if you like. Good, and inhale, let's release that, come around and take a breath. Other side, left arm extends, reaching right across the room, bring that palm to your right knee, right hand to the side of your chair. Lengthening on the in-breath, gently twisting on the out-breath. And see if you can imagine the twist coming from your lower back, the middle back, all the way up to your shoulders. I'm gonna cross my right leg over the left. Good, and let's bring it back, coming around. So before we go to thread the needle, let's do the other version of the twist. Bringing both feet to the left side of your chair. Nice tall sit, feet flat on the floor, under your knees, engaging your muscles. Breathe in and let the exhale, bring your arms around to the back of your chair. Place your hands low down on the chair to keep your shoulders relaxed. One breath at a time. No rush, no hurry. One more breath here, please. Ah, feels so good. Let's go around to the other side. 
just like wringing out a sponge, getting rid of all that tension. Nice tall sit to begin. And the exhale brings the arms around to the back of the chair. Remember not to over twist your neck. Gentle, gentle, gentle with the neck. Good, and inhale. Let's release that and come all the way around to the front. Close your eyes for a minute as you breathe and notice the effects of those two versions of the twist. Let's thread the needle. Right arm begins by stretching out. I slide that arm along my left thigh. So remember, as far as your body will allow, there's no reason to push or struggle. I'm going to forward fold. The other option is to add an arm sweep with the left hand. You can bring it to the side. Or if your body is allowing it, you can lift that arm right up to the ceiling. Head is relaxed. Let's let the next in breath bring us out. Pause for a breath. Other side. Left arm reaches out. Slide it along that right thigh, putting the thread right through the eye of the needle. Easing yourself into whatever variation of this pose feels best to you. Breathe in and exhale, release and take a breath. So let's move into some sun salutations. The sun has been so glorious lately. Pressing your palms together, pressing your feet into the floor, letting your whole body wake up. As you inhale, arms sweep up. Okay, so we're going to come into our back bend now and remember the guidance in the beginning about lengthening up before you begin to reach back. What you can do with your hands here is bring them out into a T position or actually place them on your lower back for support. I'm going to leave my arms extended. Reach back. Great, inhale, back to mountain. Now we're going to forward fold. So hinging at the hips, reaching those arms all the way down. Good. Just relax, bring your palms to your knees, come up halfway, exhale and fold. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, back bend back to mountain and back to your heart. Let's do that again. Inhale, exhale, lengthen and reach back. Inhale, back to mountain, exhale, fold. Palms to the knees as you come up halfway. Exhale and fold. Engage your arms, come all the way up. A little bit of a back bend here, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Back to mountain and back to where you began. And pause. Notice how your breath has changed. Maybe your heart's beating a little bit faster. Maybe you're breathing a little more deeply. It's all good. good. So let's go for a walk. And I love the feeling of doing this, how it feels on the soles of my feet. 
And I know that I'm waking up all those acupressure points on the soles of my feet. You can add your arms just as you would if you're walking down the street. You can adjust the speed so that it works best for you. I'm gonna add the challenge here of bringing the knee up to the elbow. So the upper body is going to stay straight as the knee comes up to the opposite elbow. Here we go. So this is working the core. More times. And then we'll bring the right knee up and let it stay bent. So how much this knee comes up depends on what's available to you. I'm gonna draw the knee up a little closer, linking my fingers below the kneecap, dropping the shoulders. Let's circle our ankles. Ooh, working out all those little muscles, joints in the foot. Let's go in the other direction. From here, we'll go into the figure four stretch. So crossing wherever is most comfortable for you, ankles, knees, or just placing that right foot on top of the left thigh. Sit up tall. Good. Pressing down on the knee, pulling up on the foot. Want a little deeper stretch, add the forward fold. Sigh out the breath. Notice how your body responds by relaxing. Good, inhale. Bring it up. Take your left hand, bring it to your right knee. Let's come into another little twist. Just looking over the right shoulder. Good, inhale, bring it back. Uncross whatever you've crossed. Pause for a breath before we go to the other side. So pumping those arms, just by doing this, you're really um, getting some nice cardio, picks up your heart rate, gets your blood moving, clears out the cobwebs in your brain. All good. Want to join me in bringing the elbows, knees together? Here we go. Remember, this is optional. Always helps to blow out the breath with some force as you bring the knee up. Good. So let's bring up the left knee now. So again, wherever you are able to bring it up, that's fine. Everybody's going to be a little different. How about we circle that ankle now? Nice and slow. and let it go the other way. Great. Ready for the figure four stretch? Here we go. Always noticing how different these different movements feel between the two sides of your body. Pressing down on the knee, up on the foot. Nice tall sit to begin. If you want, adding the forward fold. This is optional. Where is the sensation most noticeable? Send your breath right there. One more breath, please. Good. 
Inhaling, let's release and come into the twist on this side. So right palm comes to the left knee and I'm looking over my left shoulder. Good, breathing in, coming back around. We're gonna move into our, our moon salutation, which is nice because it has forward bends, back bends, and side bends. And what I thought we would do is do it twice. I'm going to lead it from the seated position first, and then come up to standing and lead it standing for those of you who would care to try it standing. Great. So breathe the arms up. And I have a suggestion here on how to keep your arms alongside your head. Let the elbows bend and see if you can get those upper arms to hug the sides of your head. Just press them right in, good. So keep those upper arms where they are and just straighten the elbows. Great. If that's not comfortable for you, if your shoulders are really tight, you can also separate your hands. So breathing in, feet flat on the floor, let's exhale to the right. Both arms are straight. Inhale, come back up to center, exhale to the left. So we're bending directly to the side, great. Inhale up to center. We're going to come into the back bend now. So remember, you can leave your arms in this position. You can separate them out like airplane wings, or you can place your palms on either side of your lower back for support. Take a minute to lengthen. Good. Exhale, reach it back. Keep the breath steady. Good, inhale back to center now, forward fold, bending at the hips. Think about reaching your arms out over your legs. Good, come all the way down as far as you can. Relax your arms for a moment, just give your head a shake. Good, re-engage the arms. About lengthening, coming all the way up. Good, and side bend to the left. In breath comes through center and we exhale to the right. Good, inhale up and bring your hands back to your heart and pause, take a breath. So again, we're gonna repeat moon salutation. I'm going to stand and lead the flow. If you'd like to remain seated and do it that way, that's absolutely fine. So I'm gonna to come to the side of my chair. So with standing poses, whether it's a balance pose or a warrior, but the same principles apply. We always keep a little bit of softness in the knees. And just to show you what I meant with the hand position at the lower back, I'm actually, you could place your palms on either side of your sacrum. So you're giving it a little extra support. You can also keep one hand on the chair. Good. Here we go. Breathe the arms up. So let's do that little bit of adjustment to align our arms. I'm gonna bend at the elbows and press my upper arms into the side of my head. Good. So keeping those arms right where they are, just straighten your elbows. Good. Inhale, exhale to the right. Let that left hip move out to the side. 
so you look like a crescent moon. Inhaling, come up, lengthen through center as you breathe in, and then reach over to the other side. Wonderful. Bring it back to center. We're going to come into the back bend now. So arms can stay extended. They can come out like wings, support your lower back. You can also keep a hand on the chair as you bend back. Hips move a little bit forward as the body reaches back. Long spine. Inhale back through center, forward fold. Here we go. Reaching the arms out, hands can come to the chair if you like, all the way down. Relax your arms, relax your head. Good. Let's re-engage the arms all the way up. Think about lengthening each time you come up. Good. And half moon to the left. Breathe back to center. Half moon to the right. Back to center. And back to rest at your heart. do a little bit of balance work here. We'll come into standing wind reliever pose. So making sure those knees are soft, picking up your toes and spreading them out wide and then pressing them down into the floor. Let's do that again. Pick up your toes, spread them out really wide and then press them down. Try to keep your feet flat. Don't curl your toes. Shift your weight to the leg closest to the chair, which should be your right leg. And let's begin to lift the left knee. Just come up a little bit at a time. You can hold on wherever is comfortable for you. Soften that supporting leg. Good. If you want to try to let go of the chair just for a breath or two, that's fine. But you can continue to hold on as well. Good, one more breath and then exhale, gently place that foot down. Ooh, good, jiggle your legs a little bit. Let's do the tree pose with the version, the leg on the chair. So it's gonna take, I'm going to take my right foot, put it up on the chair. Take a minute to soften the supporting leg and press the right knee back. Ready to make branches? Here we go. One hand or both hands. Fingers can reach up or arms can separate so the shoulder blades can relax down your body. Breathe. Good, breathe in, palms together, hands release, leg releases, take a breath. We're gonna move into warrior pose. So we're gonna be stepping back with the left foot. Hand on your hip to begin. Breathe in, exhale, step that left foot back. Good, square your hips so they're facing the front of the room. Create a little bend in that forward leg, which is your right leg. Good. Add your arms, one or both, and reach. So upper body is nice and straight. Nice steady breath. Oops. I always like to do my balancing poses on a hardwood floor, not carpeting like I have here. So it's a little bit more challenging. 
Good, so lower your hands, take your left hand, bring it to the back of your left thigh. Good, we're gonna do a little counter stretch, reverse warrior. Lifting your right arm, just come into a little bit of a back bend. Again, think about lengthening. Good, bring it back to center. Step your feet together. Shifting your weight to the right leg again, let's bend the left knee. So it might come up a little bit, or if you can manage to capture your foot, draw the thighs together and draw the heel towards your buttocks. Nice stretch for the front of the leg. Pretty intense. Great, and let that go. Take a breath and we'll go to the other side. Okay. So we're gonna move into our standing wind reliever and tree and all those poses on this side. Shift your weight to the leg closest to the chair, left leg, bend the right knee, draw it up. Again, flatten those toes out. And also think about sending your exhale out through the sole of your foot. It also helps with balance. Good, and let's release. Shift your weight to your outside leg, your right leg. Let's bring the left foot up on the chair so the toes are facing out, but adjust your hips so they're facing forward. Let's build the branches. Lots of choices here for how you build the branches. One arm, both arms, hands together, hands apart. Whatever feels most accessible. Check in with that supporting leg. Make sure there's a little micro bend in the knee. Great. Lower the hands, release the foot. Ready for warrior? Here we go. So we're gonna be stepping back with the right foot this time. Hand on the hip to begin. Breathe in and step that foot back. Doesn't have to be a big step. Can be a small one. Sink down, sink down into your hips. Good. Add the arms. Lengthen that spine. Nice, tall spine and breathe. None of this is possible without a good, steady breath. Good, lower your arms. Let's get ready for reverse warrior. So right hand comes to the back of the right thigh, left arm reaches up and a little back bend. Bring it back to center. Let's stretch out that leg. So bending the right knee, if you can manage to capture the foot, keep your thighs close together, steady breath. Watch the sensation as it moves and changes. Good, and release that. Take a breath and let's take a seat. So we'll finish up with one more twist before we do our seated relaxation. And I invite you when we do the relaxation to do your alternate nostril breathing if that's comfortable for you. It's a great way to finish off your practice. So just a nice, easy twist to the left.
Think about moving all that energy you generated up through your spine. Breathe it back to center and to the other side. Good, bring it back to center. Letting your eyes close. Moving into some alternate nostril breath if that feels good to you. Or just staying with a nice, easy breath. Doing a little body scan as you do this. What are my feeling in my feet, my legs, my torso, my arms? What feels open and spacious and where might I be holding on still to a little bit of tension? Let the exhaled breath help you let go of that. If you're doing alternate nostril breathing, you can release your hands now. Allowing your breath to deepen. Wiggling your fingers, your toes. And stretching your arms wide, 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 wide. Good. Wrap your left arm over your right. Give yourself a squeeze. Open wide again. See if you can draw those arms way back. Good. Exhale. Right comes over left. Nice big squeeze. And then bringing your hands to heart center. We'll close our practice with an OM. Deep breath. Oh. OM Shanti Peace. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from fear. And may all beings everywhere know peace. Namaste. I thought for our uh, practice today, we would go more into the area of mindfulness rather than meditation per se. And I'm gonna share with you a technique that you may already be familiar with, but you may not be. And it's a tradition that we are taught at Kripalu where I trained as a teacher. And when it comes to mindfulness, the interesting thing is that science tells us, research tells us that we're really only paying attention about 47% of the time. And that's a pretty amazing thing to think about. And even more interesting than that, the time when we are least attentive is when we're driving our cars. So that's not really a very good thing. 
So not, not to mention the fact that it might up the incidence of accidents. When we're not paying attention, we miss life as it is happening, moment to moment to moment. And when we're not really present, we can't act skillfully or make good choices and absorb what the moment is there to teach us. So mindfulness and all the different techniques that are associated with mindfulness are ways that we can show up for life. We can show up for our life. We can be more fully present. Um, the, the definition of mindfulness that I like is by John Kabat-Zinn, who's a world-renowned meditation and mindfulness teacher who developed something called mindfulness-based stress reduction. And he says, mindfulness is paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the moment, non-judgmentally, with compassion and curiosity. So in other words, we are just being fully present to what is happening in our life, whether it's an emotional event, a physical event, a mental event, we're being fully present and experiencing it, allowing ourselves to experiencing it without judging it or writing a story about it. And it's a simple practice, but it's actually very challenging to do. And I'm sure there are times, I know there are times when I catch myself reacting and not really experiencing and not really being present. So the tradition as we teach it in Kropalu is called Brifwa. And what that's short for is breathe, relax, feel, watch, and allow. B R F W A, Brifwa. And we teach it first as part of our physical practice of yoga, because we can connect with the present moment very clearly with what's happening in the body, not necessarily what's happening in the mind, because our thoughts can pull us ahead into the future or back into the past. But the moment to moment experience of the body and the breath is a good way to begin to experience this practice. So what I'm going to invite you to do uh, to have this experience of Brifwa is to find a movement or a position in your body that brings up some sensation, not overwhelming sensation, not a really challenging movement, but something that as you hold the pose will bring up some physical sensations. So even something as simple as raising your arms, you notice if you keep your arms lifted for more than 30 seconds or so, you're going to begin to get a lot of sensation there. So it could be that, it could be maybe the figure four stretch, it could be uh, even just squeezing your arm with your other hand, just something that brings up that physical sensation that allows you to connect. So let's begin. So finding a comfortable way to sit, first of all, and just closing your eyes if you like. It's not necessary to close the eyes, but it's sometimes helpful to direct your attention. And begin to notice your breathing. You don't need to change anything about the way you're breathing in this, in this instance. Just experience the breath. And then create a movement in your body that brings up some sensation whether it's extending your arms overhead, out to the side, crossing your legs or squeezing your arm, squeezing your leg, something that brings up some sensation. As that sensation builds, 
Notice what's happening with your breath. If the sensation is strong, maybe your breath is not flowing quite as smoothly. So just see if you can extend the in-breath and out-breath and deepen it just a little bit more. As you breathe like this, you may notice that your body begins to feel a little more relaxed. Continuing noticing those areas that still feel a little tight or constricted. And direct your breath to those areas. Notice any thoughts or mental activity that's going on around the tension or sensation. And let yourself soften around those mental activities as well. Try not to struggle with this practice. Let go of any thought of trying. Just follow your breath. Really feel the sensation, be open to it. Be curious about it. Noticing any details about that sensation, whether there's warmth or tingling, pressure. Allow yourself to feel all those feelings, those sensations with an attitude of curiosity and continue to breathe. Begin to watch the sensations and the breath from the place of the witness. And what that means is almost standing apart from what's happening and watching. You might even say to yourself, this is exactly how I'm feeling right now. As you watch, things may begin to change. The sensation may move, it may ease, it may build. It may even begin to dissolve. And then allow, allow the experience to be whatever it is no need to analyze it, fix it, or change it in any way. And just by releasing those judgments, feeling perhaps a greater sense of clarity and connection. Take a few more breaths and then release whatever position you have been holding and notice how you feel. Taking a few more breaths. And then as you feel ready, come back and open your eyes.
So feel free to unmute yourself and we'll share a little bit about what that experience